Hi, I'm Karen. Thanks for joining us today on this talk about MongoDB Atlas Search, unifying search and the database. I am a principal developer advocate here at MongoDB. I've been here almost four years. Uh, something really interesting about me is I am an avid paragliding enthusiast. And just three weeks ago today, I was with some friends and we flew in a paragliding wing around Mont Blanc. It took three and a half hours, France, Switzerland, Italy, before returning to France. But that's not what we're here to talk about today. I just like to squeeze that in. <laughs> we're here today to talk about Atlas Search, and I want to talk about how MongoDB made search easier inside of Atlas. Um, we're going to talk about uh, all the features that we could do, and we're going to start building queries on those features. We're going to talk about uh, indexes, analyzers, some of the nitty gritty hard stuff before we move on to demos. I'm going to show you demo. I'm going to give you the code so you can sort of download it, play with it, build your own aggregations and search queries um, before talking about architecture, what goes on underneath the hood and how that might affect performance for yours, things that you need to consider so that you can build search queries optimized quickly and confidently. So that's a lot. Let's get going. Um, why we built Atlas Search. If you need search inside of your application, you're not alone. Whether you're looking for restaurants or whether you're scouring logs for things, everybody needs search and they need rich search and they need fast search. So if you use MongoDB, you might have used dollar text for that or dollar regex for that, but that didn't bring you um, so advanced features like uh, autocomplete or fuzzy matching. You had a code around that. So what some people did was they set up third party systems and servers so that they can um, uh, do these things. But they found that this had its own set of operational overhead problems. You had to manage it, scale it, secure it. And so we saw that instead of making people do that. We just took the battle tested open source Lucene library and we integrated it directly inside of Atlas to bring you Atlas search. And so this is going to bring you a full set of rich search features without that operational overhead. We have fuzzy search, autocomplete, uh, filters, facets, highlighting. I'm gonna build out some of these inside queries inside the next 15 minutes or so and show you exactly how easy it is. So what I want you to leave today with is knowing that there are really basically only four steps that you need to do to search inside your Atlas data. You need to have an Atlas cluster. You need to have data on that cluster. You need to create a search index and you need to query via the dollar search operator. Now, all four of these steps you can do inside your Atlas interface. I'll show you how. But these first three steps, they're very fast. They only require some click of a button. So let's show you what those clicks of the button look like. So for this talk, I went ahead and spun up an Atlas cluster. It is free if you wanted to do this with me. Uh, you don't even need a credit card. And then I downloaded the sample data set that's inside of Atlas. So if you go back and look at this, uh, you can go ahead and use that. My collections that I have in that sample data set, you see sample Airbnb, analytics, we have a wide variety. I'm gonna focus on the movies collection inside of my sample Netflix database. This collection has over 23,000 movie documents. And as you can see here, these documents have a wide variety of field values. We have strings, arrays, numbers, we have dates. Um, so, with Atlas Search, we can set up an index and start querying across these values right away. So the first thing I need to do, I have my cluster, I have my data, and now I need to build a search index. So the search index we have here is different than the regular MongoDB index, and I'll talk about that later. It's basically an inverted index, um, but all you need to do to create it is just kind of click along. We're gonna use the visual editor, I'm going to keep it named as default, make sure I'm on my movies collection. And then you can see here the default settings. I'm using the standard Lucene analyzer. Uh, dynamic mapping is on and uh, let's just create an index. And that is really all you need to do to get started searching. 
We support all sorts of data. I already mentioned numerics and dates and objects. We also have Boolean and timestamps. When you map out with your default index settings, all of these, the text numerics, all of these in green are automatically mapped. If you need GeoJSON data or autocomplete, that just requires another press of a button in the interface, and I'll show you those later. So now that we have the first three, let's focus on the last one. How now are we going to query across the data? If you already use MongoDB, then you're probably already familiar with our aggregation pipeline. Documents inside this enter a multi-stage pipeline that transforms the documents into aggregated results. And so we leverage the aggregation pipeline to do search queries by making sure the dollar search operator is always the first stage inside of those aggregations. So let's go ahead and get started with our first aggregation. If we wanted to, here we are in Atlas. So I can use this, you can write this out by hand, some people do. I'm gonna take advantage of the aggregation pipeline builder here. Uh, I like this because you can add different stages in it, and it also shows you how to do, uh, it gives you the comments, it auto-completes for you. Uh, you can build that out here inside of Atlas. I really prefer working inside of Compass. If you don't want to download it, you could just go ahead and do this in Atlas. We all have our Texas developers, this is one of mine. So I'm going to use search here as my first stage. Uh, we have these nice comments that's going to guide you through how to create a search query. But um, I'm just going to go ahead and put my way. So we're going to use the default. Remember, we created the index and we just named it default. I don't have to put this name in it because it will default to the default index. Or if I named it something, I can write that in here. I always look for movies about the zombie apocalypse. And let's look inside. I know I have a plot field, and there you go. I have my first uh, search stage in here, my first search query. Uh, if I wanted to, I can look across more than one field. So I'll do plot, full plot, and title by changing the path to an array. And so now I'm looking across all sorts of different fields. And the one thing I want to point out is how easy we make typo tolerance. If I misspelled zombie apocalypse, I will get no results back. And that's, we need to allow for people to make, to make that mistake. So we do something very easy inside of Atlas. If you want to allow for people to just have a thumb slip every once in a while, just put in this fuzzy object. So you could do fuzzy max edits two, uh, one is less forgiving, um, and it'll bring you more exact matches if you wanted to do that. So now I have my first query. I mentioned this is part of the aggregation stage. Let's add some more stages here. I don't want to look at all these fields that I have here, so I'm just going to project out the fields that I want to use. Um, and I'm just going to copy and paste code here to save some time. So now I'm getting the title, the plot, the full plot, uh, the year, so I can make this a little bit bigger for you. The year, and then you can see I have the score. I'm using the meta projection operator to get the score. Atlas Search will return a relevant score for every one of the documents inside your movie collection, as you could see here. This score grades how well this movie is documented, uh, fields, the full plot and plot, matches the search terms zombie apocalypse above. And as you could see here in the preview panel, that the scores decrease as we go on. So this is bringing you the highest scores first, which are the most relevant movies. Um, and because in search speed is important, and because I know I'm getting the first, the best match movies first, I'm going to use limit as my last stage because I only want the best movies. There's no need to go across all 23,000 documents. So this will bring me my top 10, my top 10 results. So now I have my first aggregation pipeline using search. And if I wanted to grab the code for that, I simply press that button. And then here is the code that I would use to build that. And I can copy and paste it here. Now, as I mentioned, we can search across a variety of data. That was text. 
I want to search across this released date here. That's a that's a date uh, field. I can also search across numbers using operators like range and near. So in this one, I'm going to change my search field to use range. So now I am searching across the release path for anything between 1980 and 1996. And you could see my result previews here. The first one says uh, to, let's see, released in 1984. So if I change this to say 1990, it's gonna change that. Now it's gonna filter out um, anything before anything before 1990. So I have two basic queries, but how can I combine them? Because this one isn't actually very useful in and of itself. Well, we use something called the compound operator. Again, I'm just going to cut and paste for the sake of time. So as you see here, here is the range query that I built. Here is the text query that I built about the zombie apocalypse. I simply combine them in an array using the compound operator. And so this is how I could take these basic search building blocks and combine them in many different ways to bring you all sorts of rich search results. And I'll show you in a demo later how that works. And so now I want to talk about indexes and analyzers. Uh, full text search is analyzed, which means the input data that we have, like the sentence above, it was the best of times, it was the worst of times, is broken up to smaller bits called tokens based on the analyzers. The analyzers pick the rules. So for instance, the Lucene standard analyzer is going to break this sentence apart at the white spaces, lowercase everything, remove punctuation, and remove the common stop words. It was the and or, for instance, and it's going to return these tokens to us. That leaves us with best, worst times to be indexed. So I mentioned that we have inverted indexes for Atlas Search. The inverted index means that it's going to point to a different set of index, which is the uh, MongoDB indexes. So here on the left, you see that we have, um, these are MongoDB documents. Uh, and, and here on the right, we have the inverted index. So if we look for best, worst times, this two and this three, those are the documents that they exist in those sentences, if I were to index on sentence. So basically, it's important to know that inverted indexes are essentially a map in which terms are associated with a list of document IDs, and that's what makes them so fast. If I use a different type of index, let's say if I were to use a keyword analyzer, it's going to match everything exactly. Spanish analyzer would have different stop words, so it wouldn't remove these certain words. So it's important to know this when you pick your analyzer. We have all sorts of different analyzers. We're supported across 40 different languages, and we have custom analyzers, which might help your use case if you have your own sort of specific language in your data fields, for instance, HTML tags, chemical equations, or even server logs, so you can figure out where to parse your tokens. We set up something with the dynamic index. Now I want to, that was great because we can uh, index all of the fields, and as your schema evolves, we'll map those, but it's not exactly uh, performance friendly. If you only need to index a certain field, if you're only searching across certain fields, I would suggest using static index definition. Here, I turned off dynamic mapping, and I'm only mapping on certain fields, title, genre, and plot, and I set the analyzer there inside the index definition, and I can even add multi to put different analyzers on the same field. So, what I want you to think about when you pick your analyzers is think about your data. We're going to start with the data here and inside. Think about how you use it, how you query it. Then pick your analyzers. Your analyzers are specified inside your index definitions. And then you use your inside definitions, uh, in your index names inside the first line of your dollar search aggregation queries. So that being said, let's go have a look at our demo that I promised you. So if you go to Atlas Search Restaurants, you will find this demo. Uh, I wrote it. It might be a little bit buggy. I have open sourced it so you can uh, put corrections and you can do pull requests on it if you want. But just to give you an idea, um, this is a 
This is New York City and is looking for restaurants inside New York City. I can filter on star ratings or cuisine type or where. Um, a few things like you can see that I have uh, autocomplete here. If I wanted to, I can pick out these. Or if I wanted to, I can look for noodles, let's say noodles in the menu. Um, this here is, I'm going to use geolocation here. So this is the MongoDB office inside of Manhattan. So I'm going to look for noodles at least three and a half stars. I'm going to use the geo within, let's say within 24 miles of work. And there you go. So these are all the places that serve noodles within uh, less than a half mile of work. And the other thing I want to show you here is that we have highlighting. And we have synonyms. So I looked for noodles, but I'm getting back pasta and spaghetti and stuff like that. Um, if I wanted to, and this is what I think is going to help you, is that you can see if you went to show the aggregation here, this will show you the aggregation code I have. So you can see how I use compound to combine these different search coordinates. I have the geo within, the range for three and a half stars and higher. And then these are the different um, aggregation stages inside of it. So if I wanted to create the index for this, I'm not going to go through creating the entire index, but I have the data here inside what's cooking. Search index, create a new index. I'm going to use a visual editor. I am in the right collection, but before we just accept the default, now I'm going to define, refine it. So I'm going to turn off dynamic mapping. I'm just going to add a field or two here. So I'm going to say location is field. And I'm going to add it as a, you can see the different types we have. So that's geo, for instance. If I add another field, I could add stars, stars, and then that is, let's add my data type, and that is a number. So I can add this here, do everything I want to here, and that's basically how you're going to create your index. If I save the changes, create the search index. And that's what I did when I created this What's Cooking application. So I hope that helps you with it. Now, in our final minutes, let's go and look at some of the architecture that we have in it. I talked about search indexes being an inverted index, um, and MongoDB uses B-tree indexes. So you might know we have MongoD for regular MongoD. Sharding uses Mongo S. So we built a whole new system the Mongo T system that's based on Apache and has a different Java process. So the reason that this is relevant to you is that all these resources are located, co-located on the same node. So know that this is one of the reasons why you might feel performance hits, and that's why you need to use analyzers and indexes efficiently. The query lifecycle, knowing that you have Mongo T talking to Mongo D, I'm just going to walk you through the query cycle real quick so you know how that works. Your application gets your aggregation call, and MongoD sees that it uses dollar search, and it says, hey, let's send this over to MongoT. So MongoT will then look for Star Wars in the path. It's going to find these in the, in the things. It's going to find the, the documents, um, the object ID documents, and it's going to send that back to MongoD. MongoD is then going to look up those documents, and it's going to um, finish the aggregation, finish the project, finish the limits, take the metadata, the scoring and the highlights, for instance, and then it's going to set, finish the aggregation and send that back to your application. And that's how that works. And there's a lot to get through. So let me finish up by some of the takeaways that you guys should have. Um, it's included in Atlas uh, and it's free. You could have it on a free cluster if you wanted to. It is easy and it is fast. And if you're familiar with MongoDB query language, it should be no problem for you to integrate right away. It is highly customizable and the data is kept in sync because it's all in one place. You don't have to worry about scaling out um, and you don't have to worry about scaling up. We do that for you as well. Some of the resources that we have, uh, I mentioned the what's cooking is Atlas search restaurants here. This is the Git repo for that. If you wanted to have a look at what's going on there. 
I highly recommend, I use search all the time. I have to go to our docs, they're great. And we also have great search capabilities in there. Um, and then if you wanted to kind of sort of see how I built it out other than the Git, this is a video workshop that I did at MongoDB World um, a few months ago. So if you go to this link, MDB Search Workshop, this is going to take you to a YouTube video where we go through all the steps from creating APIs and how you call it from the front end and where we build out a Netflix clone. That was a lot to cover. I really appreciate your help. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the conference. And um, on Twitter, I'm you old maid. So let me know if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you very much.